Yes. Come on, come on, mate. Woo! Yes. Woo! Here we go. A nice size stripe bear on the 250 gram streaker jig. G'day Wallaby Dick and welcome to another episode. Today I am attending to a solo mission for one last shot at the Stripe Trumpeter before season closes. It's a very foggy morning here today off Muscle Road. Uh, probably one of the larger voyages that I've done solo by myself. So double checking over everything, reminding myself in my head about all my safety gear on board alongside a position report that I'll do as soon as I'm out on the water. So I'm going to deal with this and launch the boat and fingers crossed the conditions are decent out there. It looks like a pretty good forecast and mm, it's time to get into it. Taz Maritime, Taz Maritime. This is Tazcast. Over. Good morning. I hope you're well. I'm wishing to report one POV heading towards Banks Strait uh, at about the 100 meter mark. Estimated time of return, 1 p.m. Launched from Muscle Row Bay. Over. Just quickly wanted to chat about the importance of just resetting your trip in your trip intel. This is on the NSS Evo. So you can just monitor how much fuel you've been using. I've got a 320 litre tank, so I'm not too concerned about burning through fuel, but it is great to know how much uh, ground you have covered. So we've got our trip meter here, how many kilometers, uh, and then how many liters of fuel you've burnt too. So if you ever are cutting it a little bit closer than normal, you can monitor that way because a lot of tank readers simply are kind of unreliable. It's really hard to get a perfect read on a petrol tank in a boat. So it's saying 317 liters there, which is probably accurate at this point, but I find that at about the 200 liter mark, that's when I start getting a bit of a false reading. So, quick little tip for you, I definitely recommend doing that for all of your voyages. So I'm out here trying some new ground to what I have previously hit and this is what I'm sounding up. There's definitely a little bit more wind about probably 9, 10 knots which I was kind of expecting today uh, but my ambition is to drop down some of these snap baits. That's what I'm going to chase these stripey with today. Thank you very much to Snapbait Australia for sending these to me. Uh, I've got a 110 and a 150. So I think I'll start on the 150 with a little bit of bait on it. And then what I'll do is I'll drop it down. As soon as I get close to the bottom, I will just be... Wow, that looks good. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by the sound. As soon as I get down to the bottom, I'm going to come up about 10, 15 meters by the looks of it. The sound looks really good. This might even be a quick mission, but it is two days before stripey season closes. So that's why I'm out here. On the bottom meat, it's not very big, but you can definitely play. Oh, huh. I'll tell you what, for a Morwong, he fought very stripey like. It's a nice size Moe there. Now these guys need to be 25 centimeters for them to be legal. I don't need to keep this one, so I'm just trying to Treat him with a bit of respect. Alright, see you buddy. You'll be right. He's gonna swim back. Alright, one table fish for the day. That's good. That might be right. Yeah, there we go. He's just kicking him out. Hey buddy! How are ya? Welcome to the game. Welcome to the channel. Another Moe. The chunks are so interesting as well with this jig. 
a nice little moe on the jig. zone right now That's the seventh or eighth that I've pulled up now, so I'm gonna swap to my old faithful jig. So on the way out here, there was a fair bit of swell and I ended up actually falling over the side a little bit and breaking this net. So I'm gonna see if I can quickly repair it. A good tip is to always have a little toolbox on your boat so you can try to make some repairs like this. The amount of times that this toolbox has helped me while I've been out here has been incredible. All right, that is fixed. There we go. Looks like it's another Moe. Moe after Moe after Moe. Ooh, there we go. There's a stripey. He's taking some string. Woo. That's a big boy. Yes. Come on, come up, mate. Woo. Come on. Oh my gosh. He's taking some string. Oh my God. Just fed that to him. I swapped over to a 250 gram. Just so I could get down because the current's running a bit heavier. And just dropped it onto him. Oh, come on. Let me get some verse up. Keep that tight. Come on, come up, mate. Stop carrying on. I'm not getting out of it. It's been a long day to get that one hit, I'll tell you that much. A couple of hours, finally found one. And he feels like a pretty decent size too. Hopefully I can keep him on there. It's gonna go nice and easy. Up you pop. I'm um, using a Daiwa Celtic Reel Ocean's Legacy PE2. Nice and sporty on the Nomad Streaker for this hookup. Still no colour, but I'm definitely getting him up. And in fact, the lure that I've hooked up this one on. It's the same as what's on my t-shirt. See if we can net him. With my busted net. Yes! Woo! Yes! We are on the board! Woohoo! 
Yeah, baby. There we go. A nice size stripe on the 250 gram streaker jig. I reckon he's probably going 60 centimeters, 65. Hooked him just under the chin there. He could have come out, but this one is going. He is right on 70 centimeters. That is what we're here for. Thank you very much for your fights. You're going in my esky. <laughs> Wishing to report one POB safe at Muscle Road Bay, Tadscast, signing off. Your coverage well I have cut it pretty tight today um, there is not much tide to get back in here at Muscle Row but I thought I better come now otherwise it might not happen I couldn't mark any more fish apart from that one stripey so I'm gonna fill it that up and I'm gonna show you how I normally fill it them and skin them but first of all I'm going to try and get through here safely okie dokie guys so this is how I deal with filleting this incredible, tasty, delicious critter. First of all, I'll cut straight down here, along right to the head to get all of this meat. I'll then outline right down the bottom, and same thing, outlining on this side of his tailbone, uh, on this side of his bone, down this way. I then actually cut through the ribs and get the bones out separately. I'll just show you this methodology. Alrighty, now I can start tackling this side. Down through the belly. We'll have a look at what he's been eating shortly. Well, we can see right now, he's been eating some very large red bait. Look at that. Mmm. Well, maybe that's a little mackerel. Perhaps it's a little mackerel. Full of roe to be expected this time of year. Which I think tells us that it's a female. It's never an elegant process doing this. No matter how many times you do it, you'll still find some way to stuff it up. But what I like to do is once I've got my outline, just follow the sound of the bones to essentially ensure that you don't miss a beat of meat which is looking pretty good just there so I'm pretty happy with how that fillet's looking all in all pretty tidy it's gonna keep following down the bones now I grab just in here and cut along the rib cage hold the tail push him away from me and that way, it just comes straight off. So then you've got a nice big stripey fillet and you haven't missed too much meat. Just here, maybe you can get that off with a spoon later on, but it's not quintessential. Now you can either eat this fillet as is. I like to skin them. But what I also do is I just cut around the ribs. But I try to keep it as light as possible so I can keep as much meat as possible underneath. Because this meat is some of the best eating fish in Tassie, in my opinion. So just cutting down about two centimeters and then cutting across on top of the ribs. And then Pelican Pete will come over and he'll eat it. But there you go. That's majority of it done you go buddy now the last section is skinning it so get nice and close just chop here and then I get a little bit of that skin it's my two hands I've just had a bird pull on my head I think and then nice and flush alongside I'll just start pressing down and following that skin line now a good hack what I was recently taught as well is once you've got about this much skin off 
just cut a hole straight through the middle like that and then you can put your two fingers in here and keep cutting and you've got more grip just like when you were cutting that rib cage off the tail blade down nice and flush and then you can just keep on skinning him whilst pulling the skin to your left and blading with your right there's the skin pelican's happy and there you go so this is what's left of the frame once i've actually uh filleted it got my fillets just down here another hack on these guys is chopping the wings just here it can get a little bit messy to get to it but there is a lot of meat just down through here that is tasty especially on the barbecue <laughs> there's that there best way I find is that if I stab it in the side then I can work it walk it out on each side as well so here's a frame and then what you have here are the stripy wings and torso that has some fantastic meat on it look at that Present it. So that is ready for the barbecue and then ready to pick at. Just need to get rid of some of these scales on it. What a fantastic way to end the second last day before I head over uh, to New Zealand for a bit of fishing action. So stay tuned for that coming up. Um, these t-shirts, I've started sending a few out to everyone, uh, but the competition will be going live on the 20th. So if you buy a shirt, you're running to the draw. I'm going to take one person fishing alongside, we've got $3,000 in total worth of gear to give away. So comment down below if you learnt anything and what it was this episode. And um, yeah, thanks very much for watching.